and he was like, God dang it, you incompetent fools. Even though they managed to find like literally everything else. Like if I were him, I would just give up. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liana if you're new and welcome to episode 30 of Makeup and Mythology, a series on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. Last week we covered the Slavic folktale of Vasilisa the Beautiful and her encounter with Baba Yaga, the evil witch who lives in the forest and how Vasilisa avoided becoming Baba Yaga's dinner. This week we are covering a Mongolian folktale, a folktale called the golden pitcher. So without further ado, let's get started. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, probably Mongolia, the emperor of the land looked into a mirror and was shocked to find that there was a single gray hair on his head. Utterly alarmed, he met with his royal advisor and was like, dude, what's wrong with me? Am I turning into a mouse? I... I have this gray hair on my head. I have a mouse hair on my head. And his royal advisor was like, Jesus, I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> no, sire, you're not turning into a mouse. You're just getting old, but it's okay because everybody gets old. You know, everybody gets gray hair. So you better get used to it because you're going to get more and more as time goes on. And the emperor was like, oh, hell no. I'm getting old. I'm going to die. No, I'm not having this at all. Are you kidding me? If I get old, then my people will see me as weak and incompetent and unfit to rule. And I can't have that. So he decided that the one and only thing to do was to never look at his reflection ever again. Not only that, he decided that mirrors were the problem here. So the next day, he sent out a royal decree that said all mirrors in the entire land had to be destroyed. <laughs> This reminds me of how in Sleeping Beauty, after Maleficent cursed Aurora to prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die, King Stefan ordered all the spindles in the entire kingdom to be destroyed. Like, wow, what if somebody needed their spindle? Like, what if that was their livelihood, man? You better have sent out some stimulus checks. And similarly, in this situation, we've got all these mirrors being destroyed. Well, too bad, so sad if you're the guy who makes and sells mirrors. Also, doesn't this emperor have like royal duties to attend to? I swear, in like most of these myths and folktales that I'm covering, whenever there's like an emperor or a king, they usually aren't performing their kingly duties. They're usually doing everything else. He's just fucking around. He's ordering all the mirrors in his land to be destroyed so he doesn't have to have a midlife crisis about his one gray hair. Anyway, this plan actually worked for a while. For a while, the emperor forgot about his gray hair and all was well. He was able to focus on his duties or whatever. But then one day, while he was out and about on the streets, he saw an old man who was extremely decrepit and just hobbling along, minding his own business. And the emperor got triggered. He was like, holy shit, I don't want to see a single gray hair on anyone. Anyone. Because that'll just remind me of my own. I can't have that. So what does he do? He's like, all right, the old people gotta go. They are out of here. That is so freaking rude. <laughs> also, as emperor, I guess he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. You know, nobody's keeping him accountable. There's no balance of power here. This is flawed. A flawed system. So yeah, he exiled all the old people so that he wouldn't have to look at them. There, problem solved, he said to himself, finally relieved. No mirrors, no old people. Now there was nothing around to remind him that he was aging. There was one young woman who lived in his kingdom who didn't want her ailing grandfather to have to leave. So what she did was hide her grandfather in a cave and brought him food and water regularly. And this went on for a while. It wasn't long after this that there was a very big storm. I would say it's karma for the emperor, but the thing is the storm destroyed people's houses and it didn't really do that much to his palace, so although the wind wasn't strong enough to destroy his palace, it was strong enough to blow everything out of it. Just picked up everything and blew it right out the windows. Whoosh. It picked up every precious treasure, every piece of furniture, every plant. Why am I having so much trouble visualizing what's in an emperor's palace? <laughs> you know, when I was younger and I really wanted to be a princess, I would just imagine that there would be like piles of gold and jewels just on the floor, but no, that's not really a thing like anywhere. That's just a thing in Wenlock's palace in Barbie Magic of Pegasus. <laughs> and he was the bad guy. <laughs> anyway, so the emperor's prized possessions were all over the kingdom. Oh no. So he sent his people out to search for them. And over time, everything was found except for his most prized possession, his golden pitcher. Day after day, his people returned empty-handed. They didn't know where this damn pitcher was, and he was like, god dang it, you incompetent fools. Even though they managed to find, like, literally everything else. Like, if I were him, I would just give up. I would be like, okay, well, I'm glad that I got most of my shit back. But no, he wanted this pitcher. It was very important. So he was like, if you want something done, you better do it yourself. So he went out there himself in search of his golden pitcher. I mean, before when he would neglect his kingly duties to get rid of mirrors and old people and shit, at least you could give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh, maybe there really isn't that much to do as king. Maybe crime rates are low, the people are prosperous, and it's overall a good time. But now we know that people 
definitely need some disaster relief from that big ass storm. And what is this guy doing? He's using all his resources to go find one thing. The golden pitcher. A golden water container. Are you kidding me? Bad emperor. Bad. If there's gonna be a rebellion, there will be no one else to blame but yourself, son. So after some time of searching, the emperor finally found his golden pitcher. Sort of. It was at the bottom of one of his lakes. One by one, his advisors dove into the water and came up empty-handed. They all told him that they went to the very bottom, but the pitcher just wasn't there. Nonsense, the emperor exclaimed and decided, if you want something done right, you better do it yourself. So he swam deeper and deeper and deeper into the lake. He looked around, but he couldn't find the pitcher at all. And then he drowned. No, I'm kidding, he didn't drown. But that's where I thought the story was headed. He actually managed to swim right back to the surface, but... Of course, he was empty-handed. He decided that there definitely had to be some dark magic at work here. The pitcher was clearly right there at the bottom of the lake, but it just was out of reach. Why couldn't anyone get it? The emperor didn't want to give up just yet because this pitcher was very important to him. It was a family heirloom. So he wanted to do anything he could to get it back. So he issued a decree that said, whoever gets me back my pitcher will have whatever they want. Now that's a very dangerous promise because what if somebody was like, I want to be king or I want you to eat crap. Like he can't say no, he promised. So do we remember the young girl who hid her grandpa in a cave? Well, it's her time to shine. She heard about this new decree and was very excited because her wish was to have her grandfather be able to come out of the cave and live a normal life again. So she showed up at the lake and she went to the emperor and said, I can do it, I'll go get the pitcher. The emperor laughed in her face. You're nothing but a stupid little girl. If all these men can't do it, then I doubt you can do it. But you know, I think this will be entertaining. So why don't you give it a try? So freaking rude, I hate this guy. <laughs> so she went right up to the lake saw where the pitcher was, but instead of diving in, she began climbing a tree that was right next to the lake. And nestled in the branches of this tree was none other than the golden pitcher. It turns out everybody, including the emperor, had only seen the pitcher's reflection in the lake. They're all a bunch of idiots. The emperor, upon getting his pitcher back, was very pleased, and he asked the girl, what wish do you have? And she said, my wish is for all the old people to come back from exile. The emperor was a man of his word, so he granted her request. And from that day on, he learned not to be a piece of crap and to see things in a different light and not put so much emphasis on appearances. And he lived to become a very wise and very old ruler with lots of gray hair on his head. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.